everyone, it's me Jen and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my life here in Taiwan. So if you've seen my last video, then you would have seen that I climbed the tallest mountain here in Taiwan, which is called Jade Mountain in English or Yushan in Chinese. Today I'm going to be talking more about Yushan itself, maybe give a little bit of background and a self-reflection of my hike since the video itself is more like a vlog up and down, you know, here and there kind of things. But this is gonna be a little bit more, I think, maybe useful. So yes, I climbed Taiwan's tallest mountain. It is 3,952 meters high. It is the tallest point here. I believe it is the tallest point in Northeast Asia. For a lot of people who also might not know this, two thirds of Taiwan is mountainous. Like, there's a lot of mountains here. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but there are over 200 mountains here that are 3,000 meters and above here in Taiwan. And those are just the 3,000 meter and above mountains. There are other mountains as well, obviously at different height ranges. Basically, there are five major mountain ranges here in Taiwan, and Jade Mountain is the tallest. The mountain itself is quite crucial because it supplies a lot of water here to Taiwan. Online, it says it supplies eight rivers, uh, including the major river systems of the central, southern, and eastern Taiwan, and that provides three quarters of Taiwan's water supply. To climb Jade Mountain, you need to apply for a permit. Because Jade Mountain is the tallest mountain here in Taiwan, and it's actually on the 1000 NTD bill, I got my wallet. I do have one. This is the $1,000 NTD bill, and you can see here, Jade Mountain, there she is. As I was saying, Jade Mountain is the tallest and probably the most famous mountain in Taiwan. Because of that, it is extremely popular to hike, so you must apply for a permit, sometimes four months in advance. So when you apply, you kinda enter into a lottery, and then you will find out within a certain amount of time if you got accepted or not. But my friends told me that if you're a foreigner, you can apply in advance before others and your chances of getting a permit become a lot higher because of it. You generally find out a month before your selected date if you've been accepted or not via email. At Paiyun Lodge, 24 spaces are reserved Sunday through Thursday for foreign visitors to the park. You can visit the park's website for more information in English and apply in English as well, and I believe a few other languages. Yushan National Park, it is a park that is protected, which is why you need a permit to climb. And they kind of limit the climbers per day. I'm glad that it's a controlled environment because some of those ledges <laughs> were small. And I cannot imagine how many people would want to be like climbing it, especially during peak season. So the difficulty of climbing Jade Mountain. So online it says it's about a medium, ish level hike it just depends on what route you choose so we chose the two-day ascent and if you want to watch that you can go see in my video of the actual climb itself that is kind of ranked at like three out of five difficulty but if you want to do the single day ascent so just up and down it's ranked obviously higher i think it's like a five out of five i'm really happy and proud of myself that i got to climb jade mountain and i could make it to the top especially for the sunrise because there were times that I really didn't think I was going to make it to the top. How do you feel, Jennifer? Like death. <laughs> the first like hour and a half of the hike, I was really second guessing my decisions. Like, oh my God, Jen, what have you gotten yourself into? I'm severely questioning my life decisions. I don't think I could do the one day ascent, but the two day ascent I managed. I took a couple days to recover at home because I couldn't move my legs and my hips afterwards, but it was well worth it. I am so glad that I got to get to the top with a bunch of friends. And I have to say the other climbers that you pass going up and down are so cute and kind and friendly. Like when you pass each other, everyone's like, hello, hello, ni hao, or it's all on, like for the morning. Jayo, jayo, like you could do it, you could do it, keep going, they're so cute. Um, it just, it was really nice to see like people just cheering each other on. You don't know each other, but you're like, you can do it to everyone that passes. Because when I climbed Mount Fuji, for me, it wasn't like that at all. So it was very nice and heartwarming and touching for me. Jade Mountain doesn't only have um, significant importance for Taiwan, but also for the indigenous peoples here in Taiwan. So yes, there are indigenous tribes here in Taiwan. I believe there are 16 now, and I have worked previously in other videos with a few tribes. Yeah. 
Yushan really has very important significance specifically for two tribes here in Taiwan, which I will put here and here. The Zhou people are located for the most part in the central area of Taiwan in Jiayi and Nanto County. They have a rich oral history that tells of their ancestors' migrations from around Yushan and the Jiayi Tainan Plain. They regard Yushan as a holy mountain. The Bunong people are widely spread out through Taiwan's central mountain ranges. This tribe is famous for their polyphonic music and speak a language called the Bunong language. Yushan is actually called this. And in that language, it can be translated as the ultimate refuge mountain peak. If you click this video, I'm going to assume that you are interested in learning more about Taiwan. And if you are, then you can go down here to taiwanplus.com and you can check out on their social media platforms. All the different information that they have about Taiwan is jam packed with a lot of different things that you can learn. Taiwan Plus is basically a streaming platform in English to help you learn more about here. There are a lot of original videos on there that are not only covering about Taiwan, but news, travel, culture, and more. Everything you wanna learn. In addition to their website, they also have an app. So you can find things easily on there as well. For example, this video I watched before heading to Yushan for my own hike, it caught my eye because it got me really excited for the adventure I was going to go on, seeing how beautiful the view could be at night and how all those little lights there moving on the screen are hikers climbing up the mountain, which is exactly what I was going to be doing. From watching videos on Jade Mountain and then going to Jade Mountain and actually climbing it, I can see how this mountain itself really kind of sums up and represents Taiwan. Not only am I talking about the beautiful landscape that you can see and the wide variety of different kinds of vegetation and plants and fauna that you can see there, I'm talking also about the hikers, how I mentioned that everyone is just so friendly and they're so happy to see other people there climbing and cheering everyone on. It really just like kind of makes people really come together. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. All in all, it's just a really good unforgettable experience for me. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that I hope that you can see it too. Not only through my video, but maybe one day you can also climb the mountain and experience it. A little bit of self-reflection on climbing. I actually felt very nervous for this hike because I'm not so active as I was in Japan. So a month and a half before my climb, I started to go to the gym and kind of like work my body into um, not giving out on me on the mountain, which I should have started earlier upon self-reflection, but it's better than nothing, okay? Also, Annie, my friend, gave me this little pack with like salt lemon candies and little tiny pieces of chocolate that you can like nibble on while you are climbing. The salt candies are really, they really hit the spot. They kind of just like help put salt back into your body since you're sweating so much. I also had altitude sickness pills, which I didn't even know that was a thing. Maybe some people think they work, some people don't think that they work, but I mean, I'll take it because I got sick on Mount Fuji. I didn't want to deal with that again. So I took those pills and I think it helped. I didn't, I didn't puke, I didn't feel sick once, only on the first night when we stayed at the first cabin, Dongpu. My eyes kind of felt like weird while I was looking around. I felt a little bit of a headache coming on. But after we slept there and everything, then it was okay in the morning. We kept taking the pills, half a pill. So half a pill in the morning, half a pill at night. Another great thing that I bought for this hike that I actually didn't even buy until I was at the Alishan rest stop and I saw it there was earplugs. I am so happy that I bought earplugs because it's really important to have a good night's sleep. And I did not sleep well when I was on Mount Fuji. It's because the bunks are just all open. So earplugs might just save your life. It was pretty good. And I have to say also the cabins are quite nice and the food, the food is better than what I expected it was going to be, which if you're going to be hiking, you need to reserve the cabins ahead of time. Another thing to add, it is cold at the top if you're gonna go there for sunrise. I was like, oh, I'm Canadian, it's okay. Oh, it's August, it might not be so bad. It is cold at the top. The layers I had on at the top, I had on a sports bra, a t-shirt, a long sleeve shirt, a very light kind of like a windbreaker jacket and then a heavy jacket and a headband. And I was still cold, it is windy up there. I made it. So keep that in mind. 
Once the sun comes up, however, it does become more comfortable because obviously the sun's warming your skin. Another useful thing is sunscreen because even though it was kind of misty at some point and it wasn't too sunny, I ended up getting a little bit of a like sunburn, a little color, and even I was applying SPF 50. In our hiking group, we had a few experienced climbers and one of them, super experienced guy, climbed over 50 mountains in Taiwan. He was like, go, go, go. He told me that even if you do not feel hungry, you must eat. I think that was important for me to remember because even though I love eating when I'm doing physical activity and I'm just so tired and exhausted, like thinking about eating just doesn't come into my mind and it doesn't even register in my stomach until I'm like sitting down and just like resting in the lodge. Then suddenly I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. So when we stopped for lunch, it was really important for me to remember that and eat some food because you burn a lot of calories when you're climbing the mountain, obviously. Anyway, that is my little recap of Jade Mountain. And if you are interested in learning more about Taiwan or Jade Mountain itself, you can check out Taiwan Plus down below in my description box. Taiwan Plus not only has a web page and app, you can also find them on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you can enjoy the rush of climbing Jade Mountain like I did one day. I'll see you in my next adventure. Bye.